Archaic Records. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Archaic Records here with you again. My name is Jamie, coming at you from Nashville, Tennessee. Here to wish you a very happy Morrissey Monday, my weekly celebration of all things Morrissey and the Smiths. And I just got back from the two-show weekend uh, down here in the great state of Tennessee. Uh, well, at least the state of Tennessee, nevertheless. Uh, Saturday, October 14th, out in Memphis. Uh, and Sunday, October 15th, right here in Nashville. Uh, I drove out to Memphis on Saturday afternoon. Now, I really love Memphis. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite cities. Uh, to me, Memphis kind of gets a bad rap. Uh, I think if it were up to me, I would actually rather live uh, in Memphis than here in Nashville. Now, I don't know that my uh, wife would necessarily agree uh, with that commentary. Uh, but I've always really loved Memphis. It is one of my favorite cities. Uh, to me, uh, it's just always had uh, a much more authentic feel uh, to me than Nashville. Uh, it's a lot more gritty. It's a lot more sort of DIY. It's a lot more neighborhoody. I really like the music uh, and the culture out there, uh, not to mention the fact that it is the birthplace of rock and roll. And if you are a music fan, uh, or at least a rock and roll fan, uh, it really sort of is the holy land. Uh, also, my wife and I uh, got married in Memphis a couple years ago. Uh, so for me, it's a very sentimental uh, place. Uh, for me now, Nashville uh, is a very nice place to live, uh, and I have sort of few complaints about living in Nashville, uh, but compared to Memphis, Nashville uh, can sometimes come across as being a little bit sterile, uh, it's a little bit uh, bland, uh, and culturally, uh, it's a lot like living in LA. A lot of the people that live here uh, are sort of soulless, uh, a lot of people here are sort of self-impressed, uh, very status-driven, uh, which is not to say I don't like Nashville, because I do. My wife and I have lived in Nashville now for about four years, or almost four years, actually. That's crazy to think about. Uh, but I've always liked Memphis much more uh, than Nashville. Uh, anyway, we arrived uh, out in uh, Memphis. Now, we live uh, kind of on the western uh, side of the city of Nashville. So to get from our house uh, to Graceland, uh, where the show was held, the uh, show on Saturday in Memphis, uh, takes us just about three hours, so we got into Memphis uh, about 5 o'clock on Saturday afternoon after we stopped uh, to grab some food. Now, I have to throw a shout-out uh, to this place. Uh, I had never been before. My wife and I, when we go to Memphis, we usually have a few places uh, that we frequent as far as food goes because <laughs> Memphis, uh, if you're a food person or if you're a fat kid at heart like this guy right here, uh, Memphis is just a food haven uh, there's several places we usually go to when we're in Memphis, uh, but there's a place we stopped at this time because it was sort of closer uh, to Graceland. Now, we usually hang out more downtown, but we were out in a suburban area called Germantown, which is a very uh, sort of nice and affluent uh, part of the Memphis metro area. I don't think it's actually in the city, but we ate at a place uh, called the Germantown Commissary, and holy smokes! If you like amazing food uh, and portions that were a little bit ridiculous, uh, to be honest with you, even if you're a fat guy like me, uh, the portions were a little bit out of control, but the food was unbelievable. Uh, it was a place I'd never been before. I don't think we'd ever actually really even been to the Germantown part of Memphis, or I hadn't anyway. Uh, but this place was called the Germantown Commissary, and if you ever find yourself... Uh, in Memphis or in the vicinity, you need to check it out. That place was the goods. Uh, anyway, after that, we arrived at Graceland at about 5.30. We wanted to get there early. The doors were supposed to open at 7 for the show in Memphis. Uh, now, I bought my tickets via the website at the Graceland Live uh, website back in June when the tickets first went on sale. Uh, but there was a glitch with the uh, ticketing uh, software or whatever. I'm not a computer person. I don't really know how this stuff works. Uh, but as of a couple days before the show, I had not received my e-tickets in my email. So we called uh, the venue ahead of time. Uh, they couldn't have been any nicer. Uh, they said, basically show up the day of the show, go to the box office or the will call, 
and they will present you with your tickets, which we did. We got there early. Uh, I know myself, I get sort of stressed out when it comes to uh, things like that. If I don't have my ticket in my hand, uh, I always assume the worst until the uh, moment arrives when I have it. So we got down there early, uh, went into the, uh, pulled into the complex uh, where the, uh, the show in Memphis was in a venue called the Elvis Presley or the, uh, sorry, uh, the Graceland Soundstage, which is a relatively new uh, venue. Now, I've been to Graceland several times just as an Elvis fan, uh, but I had never been back behind sort of where uh, this complex is. Uh, we pulled back in uh, to the driveway area. It's really beautiful back there. Uh, they've built this whole sort of Elvis Presley complex. Uh, now, the last time I was at Memphis, or the last time I went to Graceland, uh, there was a complex across the street from the house, uh, which I believe has all been replaced now by this new modern uh, complex. You have, there's restaurants, there's the Elvis Presley t-shirt shop, poster shop, CD store, uh, there's a bar, and there is this venue uh, called the Graceland Soundstage. The whole area back there is very beautiful, uh, very modern, very new. Uh, everybody that worked there was just awesome. Uh, so we got there, uh, we went into the uh, ticket booth or the, uh, the box office, presented my ID and my confirmation number, and they gave me something that I had not seen uh, in quite some time, to be honest with you, and that was an actual paper ticket. Uh, now, personally, as an old curmudgeon, I love these. Uh, I actually kind of miss the days of paper tickets. I actually don't remember the last time for any event that I had a paper ticket, uh, but I love these. These go right into uh, the museum, right into you know the collection, uh, and I hang on to these things. Uh, for life, I do remember hearing uh, somebody complain, being like, what the hell is this? What am I supposed to do with this thing? Uh, and I remember thinking to myself, just put in your hand, present it to them. Uh, you know, the thing that your phone is stapled in all of the time. Uh, I recently learned that the uh, number one leading cause of death uh, among Zoomers is uh, minor inconvenience. Thought that was interesting. Uh, it recently overtook uh, hurt feelings. Uh, so anyway, with our tickets secured, we had time to kill. So my wife and I went back, uh, kind of hung out in the car for a little while, uh, walked around the complex. Now, unfortunately, a lot of the complex by the time we got there uh, was closed. They usually close, I guess, around six o'clock, or at least that's what it says uh, on the ticket. Uh, anyway, the venue, uh, like I said, the Graceland Soundstage. Uh, was really cool. We got uh, they opened the doors around seven o'clock. We got in line around six thirty, and we went in. Uh, and the place is just beautiful. We walked into a they let you into a place called the Lightning Lounge, uh, where there's a seating area, a couple of bars. Uh, now the Graceland Soundstage, uh, according to its website anyway, opened in two thousand nineteen. The place is very nice. It's very modern. It's very clean. Uh, everybody that works there is just super nice, very friendly, very helpful. Uh, they kind of uh, let us in. My wife and I uh, went to the bar and we got ourselves a drink. Now, this was something that caught me a little bit uh, off guard. Uh, now, this was both it, at both shows in Memphis and Nashville. Uh, this is the one from uh, Nashville. But we went to the bar, we ordered ourselves a couple of beers, and they came... Uh, and now this is the one from Nashville last night at Fisher Center. But I don't know if you can see this, but this is actually like a sippy cup. And we ordered our drinks. They came in these sippy cups. Now, even uh, saying the word sippy makes me want to take a shower. But it makes me wonder, have we gotten uh, to this point? Have we devolved uh, to this point? This is something... Uh, that Mark Mothersbaugh and Jerry Casale have been uh, preaching since the 70s. Now, these are nice, I'm not complaining, but I do find it very interesting that at this day and age, 2023, uh, human beings are once again, or adults at least, are once again uh, drinking out of sippy cups. Uh, now, I get, I get it if you're, you know, going to go out there and just get completely hammered, uh, but if you are the type of person who gets completely uh, smashed off $12 beers, then you are much more of a professional than I am. And at this stage in the game, I am 
very much uh, sort of a lightweight or at least compared to what I used to be. So the sippy cup was something I found to be kind of funny, maybe not necessary. It is a, both venues, these shows were very nice, so maybe it's just a, a way to sort of protect the property. Uh, anyway, with our drinks in hand at the Lightning Lounge, we realized uh, that there was a merch line starting to develop. Uh, so we got in the merch line. Now, the way they did the merch line, or the way they did the merch at the uh, Graceland Live in Memphis, I thought was actually really cool. The uh, merch area was kind of off, uh, not really inside the actual venue. It was kind of down this kind of corridor. Uh, and you got into a line in the lounge to go into the merch area now the merch area they were allowing groups of 30 people in at a time which i actually really liked a lot uh, the merch area was relatively small so it kept it from getting too bottlenecked and i'm somebody who gets uh, relatively claustrophobic uh, so i actually really liked the way they handled the merch situation in memphis uh, we got our stuff we got our goods if you will uh, headed back out uh, went back out around and back out into the Lightning Lounge and basically uh, got in line to be let into the actual venue. Now, I didn't realize this uh, until we got there and got our tickets in hand that it was actually uh, assigned seating or uh, reserved seating. I was under the impression uh, falsely that it was just general admission. It was just all floor seating. Uh, so it didn't really matter once we got in that we had waited in line. It didn't really matter. There were seats uh, once you went into the actual venue itself, the venue itself was very nice, very modern, very clean. Uh, if you had to describe the way it actually felt, uh, it kind of felt like a big movie theater. Uh, but it was very nice, uh, very clean. Uh, again, everybody who worked there was just awesome, very helpful. Uh, one thing that I noticed as soon as we went in was that the whole thing is seated, which I don't love especially going to sort of a rock show. I don't really love seated rock shows, but uh, I was like, okay with it. So we ended up finding our seats, which weren't, <clears throat> which weren't bad. Uh, and of course, at that point in time, you're just waiting. I'm digging through my bag, looking at my shirts, uh, basically just wondering uh, what uh, songs are going to be played. I've done a relatively decent job, I think, uh, at not tr uh, spending too much time on YouTube over the last couple weeks, <clears throat> watching uh, you know performances or checking set lists. The show was supposed to start uh, at 8 o'clock, uh, and basically right at 8 o'clock, uh, a video uh, presentation began. Uh, and at first I was a little shocked. I thought that, you know, wow, he's never right on time, right at 8 o'clock, but literally right at the uh, tick of eight bells, a video presentation began playing, uh, and of course, uh, at this point in time, I'm very excited. I've not seen uh, Morrissey since pre-COVID. I'm getting antsy. Uh, the room is beginning to fill up. Pretty decent-sized crowd for uh, the show, even early. Uh, and the video presentation kind of continued on and on and on, and my wife even told me, because I hadn't checked online she said, do you know how long uh, this video presentation goes on for? And I said, I don't. And she's like, well, I'm not going to tell you, but you can, you know, we got a little while to wait. Uh, anyway, the video presentation went on for 37 minutes. I actually thought it was really cool. Uh, I actually really enjoyed it a lot more the second time, uh, the second night in Nashville, because knowing that it was going to be a little bit long, uh, after every sort of little clip on the video uh, in Memphis ended, you know, you kind of build your intent, your you get you know, your expectations up like he's about to walk out on stage. He doesn't walk out on stage. He doesn't. So I actually enjoyed the video presentation a lot more uh, last night in Nashville because I knew it was going to be long. Uh, and again, I wasn't. I knew when he was going to be coming out the second night. Uh, so anyway, at eight thirty-seven p.m., the lights go down. The band comes out. Uh, Morrissey comes out. The crowd is the place is pretty packed. I don't believe that Memphis was completely sold out. But it was uh, completely, uh, was relatively packed. And one thing I was very grateful for, uh, as I mentioned, uh, this was a seated show, which I don't necessarily love uh, or don't love at all, to be honest with you. Uh, but as soon as the lights went down uh, and Morrissey came out and the band came out, everybody stood up and started cheering. And that was great.
great for me because, like I said, I just do. I don't really like sitting uh, during a uh, a show, especially a sort of a rock show. Now, one thing uh, I will say, uh, there were a couple things about the venue in Memphis uh, that I didn't love, and one of the things I didn't love was that the floor was completely flat. Now, I'm fortunate in the, in the fact that I'm relatively tall. Uh, my wife is relatively tall. Uh, but you could definitely see that there were some people who just couldn't see anything. Uh, the floor is completely flat. I think it would have been much better if they would have built it at least on like a very slight grade. So, you know, you're not standing directly in, uh, behind the person in front of you. That was just a small sort of observation. It's like nothing bad. I thought the venue itself uh, was really cool and it sounded great. Again, it was very new, uh, a little bit sterile. Uh, I, I think I, I said this before, but it kind of felt like a movie theater, but the sound in there was great. Whoever uh, designed the sound, it was it just sounded impeccable. I mean, how could it not with the big guy going? Uh, anyway, the first song that they broke into uh, in Memphis uh, was an Elvis Presley cover. Now, uh, playing in Memphis, playing on the great, uh, property of Graceland, I knew that there was going to have to be uh, an Elvis Presley cover. I didn't know that he was going to go right into it uh, first song, but that was cool. I thought it was uh, an interesting choice. I've never seen Morrissey open with a cover. Uh, he did the song You'll Be Gone off of Elvis's 1965 record, uh, Girl Happy. Uh, I am a huge Elvis fan, so it's a song uh, that I kind of knew. Uh, I will say it was an interesting choice to open the show with because I don't necessarily think that it got the crowd amped up and popping uh, a lot of the people standing around where we were were a little bit confused by the song now i get it if you're not uh, an elvis presley fan at all which i am i'm a huge elvis nerd i knew the song uh but if you are a morrissey fan and you know that he's going to do an elvis song just knowing morrissey knowing how he is uh, you know he's not going to come out there uh, and sing heartbreak hotel or Jailhouse Rock, you know he's going to go back and dig up some obscure, sort of rare, deep cut. Uh, I really liked it. Uh, like I said, I don't think it was a song that necessarily got the crowd just cranked right away. Uh, I really liked it. I thought it was a great song. I thought it was very cool uh, for him to do an Elvis cover. You sort of knew he was going to, uh, but I thought it went pretty well. I don't know that the song... I thought it was good. I don't know that the song necessarily went over uh, well with the entire crowd. Uh, but the second song, uh, right after that, was Suede Head. And, of course, you know, that's all you need to start playing. And that gets even the most uh, casual Morrissey fans uh, up and going. I do want to go back to You'll Be Gone uh, for one second and just say that that was the only show from the Memphis that was the only song from the Memphis show that didn't get played both nights. Uh, the rest of the set was played both nights. Not in the same order as this. This is the Memphis set list. Uh, the Nashville set list uh, consisted of a lot of the same songs. Different order. Uh, but the second song in Memphis, anyway, was Suedehead. He killed that song both nights. Uh, that's always a crowd pleaser. Uh, even if you're the most... Uh, jaded and hearted Morrissey fan. You have to love the song Suedehead. It's not necessarily one of my favorites of all time, uh, but it's definitely a crowd pleaser. Uh, and in Memphis, after the kind of lukewarm uh, opening with the obscure Elvis cover, uh, I thought that Suedehead uh, was a really great uh, way to, to get the crowd engaged, and it definitely did. After that, uh, in Memphis... He played the song, uh, Stop Me If You Think You've Heard This One Before. Uh, both nights, this song was great. Uh, this is a song I have seen him play live before. Uh, you know, anything that you go back and play by the Smiths, uh, any of the Smiths catalog is going to be instant crowd pleasers. Uh, the crowd loved this song both nights. Uh, I thought he was a little bit better uh, in Nashville for this song. I thought that both nights were great. Uh, both renditions of this song were great. Uh, it's always a crowd pleaser. Uh, after that, in Memphis, at least, he played Alma Matters, a song off of Maladjusted, an album I really love, uh, an album uh, 
that I have said, and it doesn't need to be said by me. I think a lot of people know that this is a very divisive kind of album uh, in the Morrissey catalog. I thought he played this song incredible both nights. I really love this song. Uh, it's really one of my uh, favorite live songs. I don't know why. Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily my favorite song off Maladjusted. Uh, of course, it was the single. It was the video. It's the most well-known song off that record. I love it. I thought he killed this song both nights. Uh, the next song uh, in Memphis was Irish Blood, English Heart. <laughs> I mean, anything off You Are the Quarry is just going to make me grin a little bit. Uh, but this is one of the best songs off that record. He uh, just murders this song live. This is one of my favorite live songs. Uh, the second night in Nashville, this was the encore, which I thought was a cool encore. Uh, I just love this song. Uh, and both nights, you know, both crowds too, they sing along, they know all the words. It's just a amazing song. I thought that both nights, both Memphis and Nashville, he just destroyed Irish Blood, English Heart. Uh, the next song in Memphis was Girlfriend in a Coma. This is a song that is a crowd pleaser, generally speaking, so I'm willing uh, to concede that. For me, I've said this before on this channel, I'll say it again on this channel, this is a song uh, that I don't hate, but it's just a song that gets overplayed. Uh, to me, it's kind of a silly song. Uh, I thought it sounded good both nights. Uh, I thought it sounded better in Memphis. Uh, I thought the crowd in Memphis got more into it than the crowd in Nashville. To me, this isn't necessarily a skipper uh, when it comes on as far as like, you know, just the studio version. But for me, it's just a song I've heard uh, probably too many times. Uh, for me, it's the, the weakest song easily off of Strange Ways. But it's, it's fun live, it's, it's fine, it's fun live. Uh, he sort of uh, seemed to uh, have a sense of humor about it. Uh, after that, he played Speedway. And man, that is a song I just can never, ever get tired of. I absolutely love that song. This is one that always makes me a little emo when I hear it live. Uh, I don't know why, it's just one of the best songs I think ever written. Uh, it's definitely a song that's probably in my top 10 uh, Morrissey songs all of all time. I liked the uh, performance of this song better in Memphis than in Nashville, although both were good. I felt like in Nashville uh, last night he just kind of murmured his way through a little bit of it, uh, but it wasn't bad, it was great. It's just a great song. Uh, but he destroyed the song in Memphis. And in Nashville, it was great too. But he kind of uh, sort of muttered it through a lot of the verses uh, in Nashville. He was also at the front of the stage at the Nashville show, kind of greeting fans, which was cool. But, you know, come on, sing Speedway, man. Uh, the next song in Memphis was the ultimate crowd pleaser. That is How Soon Is Now. If you had to make an argument of which is the most overplayed Morrissey slash Smith songs in the entire catalog. This is it. Uh, that being said, I still love it. I never really get tired of it, especially live. Uh, to me, this is a better live song than it is uh, studio. Now, obviously, I never saw uh, it played by the Smiths, but I really love seeing this song live. And again, this is a big one for the crowd. It gets the crowd popping everybody gets excited when this song starts and even again i think if you're the most jaded uh, hardened morrissey fan out there uh, this song at least live still has to do something for you now if you think this song is overplayed and you're kind of tired of hearing it and you definitely get tired of hearing uh, non-morrissey fans uh, praise the song i get that but man seeing it live is is awesome. After that, he played I Wish You Lonely off of uh, Low in High School. <laughs> and man, uh, this song is a song that I really love the studio version of, but this song is so much better live that it's not even uh, comparable. Uh, now, I wouldn't necessarily say that this is my favorite song off Low in High School, 
But both nights, both Memphis and Nashville, this was one of the most powerful live songs in the set. Again, uh, this is a song uh, probably like... Um, you know, other songs in the catalog that's just better live. It's better live every time I've seen it. And both nights were very powerful performances of this song. He seemed to really pour himself into this song on both nights. I absolutely love seeing the song live. Uh, the next song was off of You With Quarry, uh, Let Me Kiss You. Great version of this song, both nights. Uh, I actually kind of liked the... Um, Nashville version of this song a little bit better than Nashville Night of this song. Who doesn't love You or the Quarry? I mean, it's like my third favorite Morrissey album of all time. He could play any song off that album, and for me, it would be a total crowd pleaser. He followed that up with Darling, I Hug a Pillow off of Dog on a Chain. Now, if, if I were going to choose a song, if he was only going to play one off I Am Not a Dog on a Chain... Uh, for me, it wouldn't necessarily be uh, Darling, I Hug a Pillow, but I do like that song. and I thought that both nights he played it very well. Uh, he, I think he sounded a little bit better uh, in Nashville for that song. Again, I wouldn't... Man, if you could only pick one song off Dog on a Chain, I don't think this would be my choice, but it was great to see it live. I haven't seen him live since Dog on a Chain came out, so that was the first really song off that record I've seen live, so I thought it was cool, at least in that sense. Uh, the next song was Half a Person, and again, <laughs> holy shit, this was one of the best songs both nights. A total uh, awesome performance both nights of this song. Uh, just one of those songs uh, that he still pours everything into now. If you've seen Morrissey live, you know sometimes uh, you kind of, or at least you get the impression sometimes, uh, some of these songs he's just sang way too many times because uh, he kind of ad-libs a lot and sometimes he acts silly. Uh, but with Half a Person, he uh, killed it both nights. Uh, it's hard to pick which night was better because I love that song. Uh, and Both nights were great. He really seemed uh, really invested in that song on both nights. Uh, the next song in Memphis was The Loop. That's a song I've never seen live in person before. Uh, I thought it was really great both nights. Uh, probably a little bit better in Nashville. Uh, but again, that was a song I had never seen live. There are a few songs on here I had never seen live, at least in person. Uh, that was one of them. Uh, the next song after that uh, was a new song called Sure Enough, The Phone Rings. Uh, now for me, this song... Uh, isn't a song I've heard any sort of studio version of, so I don't know it very well. I remember at the first show in Memphis when he broke into this song, uh, some guy standing near where I stood uh, yelled out, Beer and Piss Break! Which is, <laughs> like, obviously it's a cliche joke, but it was kind of funny because I was not not thinking the same thing. I knew, sort of figured somebody was going to yell that. Uh, it was a good song. I don't know it very well. Uh, I definitely liked it much better in Nashville the second night, having at least heard it once. Uh, I also thought the performance of it in Nashville was better. Uh, the venue in Nashville just sounded better, for one thing, in general. I mean, both nights sounded great. Uh, but I thought the song was fine. Uh, it was probably because I don't know it. That was probably a low point of the show for me both nights. Uh, but that's not to say it's not a great song. I just I want to hear the studio version of it. Uh, the next song uh, was a cover of, and this is, again, this is in Memphis. The next song was a Waylon Jennings cover called Are You Sure Hank Done It This Way? I really like this song. Uh, I'm not really the biggest country music fan in the world, and I'm sort of lukewarm on my knowledge of Waylon Jennings. I kind of know who he is, and my honestly, my knowledge of him is probably pretty generic, and as a kid who grew up in the 80s, Sadly, if you're a Waylon Jennings fan, a lot of my knowledge of Waylon Jennings comes from Dukes of Hazard. Sorry. Uh, I did think this song uh, was cool. I thought it was a good version uh, of the song. I thought it was an interesting cover choice for Morrissey. I haven't seen him do this song before. Uh, perhaps you have. And I'll say, actually, it kind of surprised me that I thought that this song 
uh, didn't really go over as well either place. And I was a little bit surprised by that. It didn't shock me so much in Memphis uh, that the song uh, didn't really go over. But in Nashville, this one kind of seemed to fall a little bit flat too. Uh, kind of surprised me. This is still a big country music town. Uh, and he even says the word Nashville in the song. I thought that would at least garner more of a response. Uh, but I actually thought that song kind of fell flat both nights. I thought it was cool. Uh, like I said, I'm not the biggest Waylon Jennings expert of all time. Uh, the next song after that uh, was Please, Please, Please Let Me Get What I Want. Awesome. Both nights. A huge crowd pleaser. Uh, played this one in Nashville, of course, as well. Uh, I thought the Nashville performance was a little bit better, but the uh, Memphis one was great, too. Uh, I've seen this song live before, but this one is always one that makes me happy. Uh, after that, he played the greatest song of all time. I was starting to wonder at this point in time if he was going to play it because I hadn't been cheating on the set list. Uh, every day is like Sunday. My favorite song of all time. Uh, I've said this before. I'll say it again. I know it's not a very deep track. I apologize. Uh, but I can't help it from the very first time I heard this song. It's just probably been my favorite Morrissey song. Favorite song of all time. And he, <laughs> he killed it. Uh, it was a little bit better in Memphis than it was in Nashville. Uh, in Nashville, he did sort of murmur through some of the uh, lyrics a little bit. But in Memphis... He just really killed it, and I'm not going to lie to you. Every time I see this song live, I get a little misty-eyed. Uh, there's just something about it. I can't help it. I was telling my wife this on the drive home <clears throat> from Memphis that night, that uh, something about these shows, or this, you know, this seeing Morrissey this time, uh, especially when he played uh, Every Day is Like Sunday, and there's a couple other songs on here, where I got real close to becoming misty-eyed uh, because I haven't seen Morrissey since the pre-pandemic. Uh, it just seems like we've been through so much uh, since then, uh, not only as a collective uh, species, uh, but with my wife and I in our own lives, uh, we've been through uh, some pretty uh, substantial uh, family tragedy over the last couple years. And I think it's just a culmination of a lot of things, uh, both positive and negative in our lives, uh, kind of all hit me all at once. Uh, and I didn't tear up during Every Day is Like Sunday, but I came pretty close. Uh, so thank you, Stephen Patrick Morrissey. I love that song. I mean, honestly, if I have a funeral song, I mean, if I have a funeral, I don't really know that many people. <laughs> if, I have a, if I have a funeral song, that's probably mine. Uh, and after that, he closed out the set with one of my favorite live songs ever. One of the most powerful performances, uh, both nights, both shows, and that is Jack the Ripper. I absolutely love this song. Uh, both nights, the performance of this song was incredible. Uh, bright red lights, uh, just an incredible, uh, powerful performance. This is one of my favorite live songs in the entire Morrissey catalog. Uh, I haven't seen him play it every time I've seen him, uh, but when I do, it's a treat. Uh, he played this toward the end of the show in Nashville as well. Uh, and there was so much fog at the uh, show in Nashville last night at the Fisher Center that he actually set off uh, the smoke alarm. And about halfway through or towards the end of the song, the house lights came up and it kind of killed the effect on stage. Of the bright light, uh, just nastiness of that song. I love the song Jack the Ripper. Uh, again, towards the end of the show, I was starting to wonder if that was a song he was going to play or not. Uh, did not disappoint. Uh, and in Memphis, he came out for the encore, a one-song encore uh, in Memphis. Now, I was starting to wonder at this point in time, too. I was like, is he going to completely omit uh, your, your, your arsenal? Because he hadn't played anything off your arsenal yet. Uh, but he came out and for the encore. He played uh, We Hate It When Our Friends Become Successful. Awesome version of that song. Uh, he That was actually the first song uh, the next night in Nashville. Uh, great song. Great way to end the show. 
Uh, I would actually say a better way to start the show in Nashville than as an encore. But I love that song. And again, if you're going to play one song off of uh, your arsenal, uh, I don't know if that's the one I would choose, but I was just grateful to hear. And I'm just grateful to be part of all this, man. You know what I mean? Uh, anyway, that night the show ended. My wife and I uh, drove back here to Nashville. Uh, the next night we went to the Fisher Center uh, here in Nashville on the campus of Belmont University. Now the track listing, uh, all the songs were pretty much the same, not in the same order. They were mixed up. The one song that he played in Nashville, which he hadn't played in Memphis uh, to sort of uh, replace the Elvis Presley cover was Our Frank. Holy shit, I love that song. That is the goods. And I was hoping that he was going to play that on this tour. And when it was left off of the show uh, in Memphis, I was a little bit disappointed, Steve. But it was nice that he brought it in to replace the Elvis Presley song uh, from Memphis. Now, the Fisher Center, I'm not going to go back over all the songs again. Uh, you're welcome. But I will say that the Fisher Center in Nashville is one of the most beautiful venues I have ever been to and uh, it's surreal how beautiful that place is and again uh, you have to just tip your hat to the staff uh, everybody that works there was just so wonderful and friendly and helpful uh, now the merch situation out there was a little bit more congested uh, but it was that was really the only uh, sort of complaint for me I don't really try to complain about much if you're ever in Nashville and you have an opportunity, though, to go to the Fisher Center for any sort of musical performance, man, that place is awesome. Uh, my overall uh, review of the weekend, uh, the shows, is that if you haven't seen Morrissey yet on this tour, the 40 years of Morrissey tour, man, check it out. He sounds great. Uh, the two nights uh, that he was here in Tennessee... He seemed to be in really great spirits. Uh, he seemed to be uh, funny. He was engaged. He uh, talked about on the first night uh, in Memphis how he was sleep deprived, uh, and perhaps a little bit uh, loopy, but he didn't come across as being anything uh, but just wonderful and funny uh, and well engaged. And the second night in Nashville, one of the People in the very front who had obviously been to the show the night before asked him how he slept the night before, which he uh, told us that he had slept well here in Nashville. He had he had no love uh, love affair with the Peabody Hotel in Memphis, by the way. He took a couple shots at the Peabody, which, by the way, I've stayed at a couple times. Now, I'm not as swanky as Morrissey is, but I actually love the Peabody, so I don't know what the problem is, but I think that place... It's awesome. Stayed there on my wedding night, man. Come on! Uh, but the band sounds great. Uh, I thought the set list was really great. The uh, stage uh, presentation uh, was awesome. Uh, just everything over the past couple days about these tickets in June. Uh, and of course, I've been just waiting anxiously since then. Uh, it's always funny. It's always a little bit of like a letdown. You just get so excited and so built up to go see these shows. Every time he comes around, at least me... And it's over and you sort of uh, kind of have this sort of let down. I have to go back to work today. And uh, uh, it's funny. That it's just kind of like going back to the real world is uh, just kind of like a bummer. Now, before I get out of here, I have to give a couple fingers of shame to a couple of the people standing around us, at least at the Memphis show. Uh, that is, uh, there was a lady uh, standing in front of us at the Memphis show. Now, the show, like I said, there were seats everywhere, but everybody uh, was sort of just standing, especially once the show started. And this woman uh, was very unhappy about the fact that people were uh, standing around her. Uh, she kept yelling at people, there's seats, why don't you sit down, there's seats. Uh, and I would have been inclined to have sort of a little bit of sympathy for her, not really, but a tiny bit of sympathy for her. If while she was seated in her seat, uh, she wasn't staring at her phone, uh, watching Taylor Swift videos. Uh, and she was at a Morrissey show wearing a Morrissey shirt, staring at her phone, 
wearing Taylor Swift videos, watching Taylor Swift videos. Now, my wife gets sort of tired of my conspiracy theories, but I've pretty much convinced myself that the whole Taylor Swift thing, uh, can somebody just like put her to bed already? Aren't we all just a little bit burnt out on Taylor Swift? Uh, but I'm convinced, completely convinced, uh, that Taylor Swift, uh, like COVID, was, is just a huge sort of social experiment, uh, testing the boundaries of compliance uh, and conformity. I can't help but think uh, that somewhere uh, in some lab somewhere under uh, some university, somebody was is saying, hey, let's take this girl who is completely boring and bland uh, and let's see if we can make her into this almost sort of like religious icon uh, somebody who has no talent uh, and no soul and looks like every other boring suburbanite in the world uh, let's see if people will just turn her into almost this like religious figure uh, and we have which is sickening in a way uh, so to the lady uh, complaining and crying that people were standing around her Wearing a Morrissey shirt at a Morrissey show, watching Taylor Swift videos on your phone, I give you the finger of shame. And the second one, also, unfortunately, to a member of the Memphis audience, there was a guy standing uh, directly behind us who basically during the entire show uh, kept singing uh, very loudly, uh, not singing along with the songs that were being performed on the stage, because that is completely acceptable, in my opinion. Uh, I might do that myself. Not going to lie. But during the entire show, basically, he kept singing, Take me out tonight! At the top of his lungs. Now, I am somebody who gets annoyed with people. Uh, I am kind of a get-off-my-lawn person. I am a curmudgeon. Uh, now, my wife... Uh, is a saint. She puts up with me, for one thing. And she is just a generally uh, much more uh, forgiving, uh, look-the-other-way type of person. Uh, and I think even she wanted to wring his neck because he wouldn't stop the entire night. Now, I love the song, There's a Light That Never Goes Out. Every fan of Morrissey or the Smiths does. That's just a fact of life. And of course, I love... To see that song live, I love seeing that song live. But uh, as the show went on and he kept singing it in my ear over and over again, I couldn't help but just root that he wasn't going to play that song. I was like, I just hope he doesn't play that song because I, I just don't want this guy to like feel like he won. Uh, but anyway, that was just the two uh, sort of people around me that give the finger of shame. Bad concert etiquette to both of you. And what is the deal with Taylor Swift? I think we all need to come together as a species and have a, uh, a town hall on this situation because it's completely out of hand. Uh, anyway, if I do uh, rate the two shows, I would say that the show in Nashville was slightly better. I thought both shows were great. I thought both crowds were great. The crowd in Nashville seemed to be a little bit more engaged, which actually kind of surprised me a little bit. Uh, Nashville crowds kind of have a tendency to be a little bit uh, standoffish, just being such a big music town, uh, such a city with so many uh, musicians that sometimes people go to shows and they stand there kind of like with their arms folded, like you can't impress me. I've seen this all before. Uh, if you're not impressed by Morrissey, however, I would argue that you are unimpressable anyway. So I would have to give a slight nod to the Nashville show. Both were great, though. Uh, and both venues were awesome. And I love going to Memphis. Uh, real quick, before I get out of here, I feel like I'm rambling a lot on this uh, episode this week. I apologize. I do want to show you the two City Edition shirts uh, from the tour. Uh, now, I had most of the merch they had at the merch table. Yeah, I said it. Uh, but these are the two uh, show-specific shirts. Uh, this was the Memphis shirt. Uh, Morrissey is in the building. Get it? You know, because Elvis has left the building. I know you get it. I know. Uh, not an original design, but not an unattractive shirt. I uh, really like this one. Uh, 
And this is the uh, shirt from the Nashville show here at uh, the uh, Fisher Center in Nashville. An original design. I kind of liked it. I kind of like it, I should say. Nashville Music City. Morrissey on the uh, neck of the guitar. I like that. Very it feels very Nashville. I like the. Uh, I kind of like the Memphis shirt a little bit better. I don't know if either of these are going to be worn or not. These might just be uh, collection pieces. But anyway, man, that is my summation. Relatively long summation. I apologize. Got a little long-winded there. Uh, anyway. That's a little bit of my summation of 40 years of Morrissey down here in Memphis and Nashville. Uh, thank you so much for checking out this video if you enjoyed it. Uh, be sure to check back every week for Morrissey Monday, my weekly celebration of all things Morrissey and the Smiths. Uh, be sure to go out and support your local record store. If you haven't seen the 40-year tour yet and you have the opportunity, it's coming to your area, man. You got to do it. Uh, check out this channel. Uh, throughout the week for more record content. And until next time, my friends, I will talk to you then.